Um, okay, you guys want to see my game from uh, from last night? It started at D4. Uh, my opponent was rated about 1600. So, just for reference, he went D5, C4, E6, um, Knight C3. F5. Yeah, when he played F5, I was like, okay. Uh, cool, 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 cool. So, Knight F3. I feel like this is a pretty reasonable setup for white here. Knight F6. Uh, Bishop F4. C6. E3. So, essentially, he's playing a stone wall. But, um... Yeah, I think this is a really nice setup for white because we get total control over this e5 square. We can always play f3 somewhere. So, um, no, I just like this setup. Yeah, I feel like this is uh, this is simple and, and straightforward for white. Um, so he went here. Because I've played this setup a couple times before. and I've, I've always felt like it gives white a very, um, very lively position. Because um, the idea from here is to go knight e5 and then play like for h3 and g4. And then castle queen side and have a lot of fun on the king side. Um, so he goes knight e4. I played h3. I'm sure there's theory here, but I haven't uh, yeah, I haven't looked at it in a long time. Um, and then he went bishop d7, which I thought was not great. Um, because it leaves the knight behind. So he, he's trying to go for this classic plan, but black's not really in time, because white just goes g4 now. And, uh, okay, one line I thought was interesting, if takes, takes, you know, the rook opens up on the h-file, it's very dangerous. White's just attacking on the king side here. And if black goes g5, it looks like black is winning a piece, but um, the king is just way too open. So, for example... I could take twice here, hit this one, and be doing really well. You could take with the knight as well. This, for example, um, with this kind of mating idea. Um, so I thought I was doing pretty well here. He goes bishop e8. And then um, I took here. I actually probably should have taken on d5 first, I think. But I took here. He takes. And, uh, and then I took here. Um, because I'm playing for this trick. Takes, knight takes, d5. So he's forced to take here, which he does. But I realized, like, you know, I probably should have... I should have taken like this first because there's a chance he might have just recaptured and then then GF5 would be really nice. Because then if black takes, then we get this one right away. Um, but uh, after takes, black could still take here, and then then it would work. Uh, it would probably be similar to the game. Um, explain the trick. Well, it's just uh, just a simple pin it and win it. Simple pin it and win it. So we just win a pawn, and then bishops hanging, and knight c sevens hanging, and yeah, everything's kind of. Nice for white. Um, but okay, I took here first. Pawn takes. I took here. Black took on c3. I took with the pawn. Um, and yeah, I was definitely expecting queen takes d5 here to defend f5. And then my plan was to go queen e2. Um, and I thought it's, I don't know, kind of nice for white. I'm turning bishop c4 and I want knight e5. Just castle. 
I thought I'm doing okay here. Maybe queen a5. Um, and, okay, game get, definitely continues. But, uh, yeah, to my surprise, he played bishop h5 first. Which seemed like a, a blunder. Because now knight e5, the knight just hops in. And now you can't even take with the queen anymore because of bishop. So he probably just forgot, like he didn't realize there's bishop c4 here. And then if pawn takes, then bishop takes f5 is just uh, winning a pawn and, and everything is, is, is bad for black. So um, he goes queen c8. And yeah, honestly, I felt like, okay, I should, I should win the game now. I'm just up a pawn. I can take. Um, I started with bishop c4. I think also makes sense. Um, he goes king h8. And then yeah, here this is where I think I made I made a serious mistake. I probably should have just played here, queen b3. I was thinking after the game. But, um. Yeah, I wasn't sure about b5, but then I realized that uh, I can just go bishop e2 or bishop d3. But I like this move, actually, just inviting the trade because the king is going to be super safe on e2. We connect the rooks, and now black actually has a big problem with the development because you can't really take on d5. And then you can't move the knight either because c6 is hanging. So b5 was definitely not something to be afraid of. Uh, or worried about it all. So this probably would have been the simplest. And then I can even go bishop e2 in the future and rook b1. And yeah, I think it's just a very nice. I mean, we're just a pawn up. So I played castles, which I think was just way too, way too risky. Um, because now, now black gets g5. And, uh, and then he's going to go f4 and open up the queen against h3. So I saw this coming, um, and I had this move in mind. And I thought this, like, this was a good response. Because if takes, then I have knight g6 check. And then maybe, actually maybe bishop, no, and I can't take, i got to take with pawn. Bishop takes here, and then I want check. King needs a square. Um, something like this. I don't know. I thought I'm doing okay here. It is, I mean, sharp position, but I felt like king h2, and then the two bishops look very strong to me. The rook is hanging, of course, as well. Um, but he just goes bishop f6. And then... Uh, Yeah, my plan on this was bishop h2, which happened. He goes f4, and then I took. And so from afar, I was just kind of mainly expecting this and queen d3. Here I thought white's doing great, because uh, black's queen doesn't really have such a great square. If we go for the end game, then this d pawn is going to be really strong. So I thought I'm pretty happy here. But I didn't realize until kind of too late that in this position, he can throw in this move, which he does. It's very annoying. Because now I lose uh, control over the f3 square. So I took like this. Could have also maybe taken the other way. I'm not sure what's better. He takes here. And uh, yeah, now of course I have to be very careful. I don't just get straight up get made in here with, with bishop f3, right? So I basically have only... I have a couple moves. Um, like bishop e2 is possible. But bishop e2 I think is very dangerous because gf4 and then rook g8 check is, is a problem. Um, so I think I, I played the only, only way here, f3. Now he takes. 
and yeah all of a sudden the game you know it's just like crazy complicated <laughs> i was just like i was so frustrated at this point because i'm just like how could i how could i let this happen you know from just like winning a pawn <laughs> like it's like easy easy life and then all of a sudden i i just straight up straight up just castled into it this is played and then h2 f4 takes here. So at this point, I mean, I already saw this coming in advance. I realized I was probably okay, but yeah, I still still did not like that I allowed all this. So f3, he takes. Now it's really easy for white to lose the game, actually. Like if queen f2, for example, I was strongly considering this move. Um, there's rook takes f4. And the uh, oops, can't take. Rook g4 check is coming. Um, and I think it's not like so simple. Like after the game, I was thinking there's bishop e6 here. So if queen takes, we take on f4. Um, but bishop g4, and and yeah, this whole this whole position was very uh, very tricky to try to figure out. So that could have gone really badly. Um, instead, I decided the other option was to sack the exchange like this, but I didn't like queen e3 check here, and then like gf4. And I didn't see, I didn't see how white's bishops, you know, get to, get to checkmate here. Because like bishop g1, there's queen h3 check. Actually, now that I look at it, maybe this was possible. Bishop g1, queen h3, queen h2. Because, uh, because the end game, actually, the end game would be pretty, Pretty weird. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in the end game, but there could be could be some problems for Black in the end game. Um, but but this whole thing just looked super super unclear to me. So um, yeah, I go for this one, Bishop e6, which I think is is correct. But um, yeah, we'll see. My position isn't really super pleasant anyway. So he took. I took. Um, and now he takes here. And now it's a big problem for me because uh, I can't take the pawn back. If I take with the bishop, there's queen g4 check. And then rook takes f4. And black is uh, winning a piece. Rook g3, queen e6. So that's bad. If rook takes, then just takes and queen g4 check. As well so yeah here I tanked I think this was uh, I don't know if this was the longest thing I had in the game but this was definitely like the most critical because I realized like this position could be just bad for white um, especially if I don't make the right move here I haven't checked it with the engine or anything I, I'm curious I'm curious what it thinks but um yeah I felt like this could go very wrong for white like Queen e4 I was thinking knight d7 and then if I take the pawn, I get hit with queen g4 check. And there's all these pins. And uh, yeah, this looked very, very tricky. Like knight c5 coming. So yeah, this I didn't, didn't like at all. Um, and then if rook e1 here... Felt like ninety seven and black gets rook e eight. And uh yeah, it was like very um very hard to see like what I'm doing. It's hard to take the pawn without allowing a lot of checks and counterplay. And uh, and then black can start like trying to pick up the e pawn. Um so yeah, if queen e4, knight d7, rook takes. I think I was thinking this one. And uh, let's say here. Rook g8. Yeah, this, this I didn't like. Oh, you want queen f4, queen f4. Yeah, 
Yeah, but then still Rook G8. And then... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, need the queen on, we need the queen on E4, yeah. So... So this, yeah, this didn't look fun either. Um, eventually what I decided was I just need to win this F pawn and open up the bishop. And uh, I can actually give up the E pawn in a lot of cases. Um, just, just tactically, but also just in a general sense. Like if I just give the E pawn and I open up my rooks and my bishop, eventually I can, I can get counterplay, I can get C4 and... I can just use the open position. So I went rook f1. And uh, I I don't know. I think it was the right call. Um, and the game black went knight d7, I think, first. Um, because if queen e5, queen e5, I think, was just very risky. Like, um... Not sure if I was thinking rook f4, or bishop f4. Let me try to remember real quick. Yeah, I think I want bishop f4. Yeah, so I was thinking something like this. Rook g8 check, king h1, queen h5. Um, oh, maybe king h2. I, I might have been thinking. There are some lines where I wanted queen h2. There are some lines where I wanted this. Here maybe this one is stronger because there's rook h3. Yeah, I think king h2 here. And so this is what I was playing for. Here I felt like I'm, I'm very close to giving mate. I have rook h3 ideas, rook e3, bishop e5, c4. So that was kind of what I was hoping for. Um, but of course taking on e5 here I think is, is too early for black. So knight d7. And... Uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure I took with... Sorry, let me get the move order right. He might have thrown in rook g8 check. I just want to just wanna make sure. Yeah, he threw in rook g8 check, which actually I didn't think was, was smart. So I felt like this kind of clarifies things for me. So he went check and then knight d7. And uh, yeah, now I go rook takes f4. So if knight takes e5, there's rook e4, I think, just wins. Uh, maybe other stuff as well, but this looked um, the easiest. And then if queen takes e5, a couple moves here, but I believe I wanted this one just to cover queen d5 check. And then if queen e6, for example... Like there was a lot of moves, but like c4 is one thing, and then that sets up the queen check, but also rook f7 uh, ideas as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think something like this, and I was I was pretty happy with this position. I'm only a pawn down, but yeah, I feel like my pieces are active, and and black has to figure out the the king. Um, so here I definitely started to feel better. Um, yeah, how about rook f7? And rook f <laughs> So, this I didn't look at too closely, but isn't there rook g7? Or, yeah, is this, this wouldn't work, right? Um, but yeah, I think this is good. Might be other moves as well. Even if the queens were off the board, I was thinking this these endgames would be very nice for white if the rook can get to the, the seventh rank. I would have a lot of activity. So I was definitely starting to feel more optimistic at this point. Um, oh, yeah, actually, I was thinking about that too. Queen takes e5, c4, just right away, right? Yeah, just leaving the queen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely thought like, once I saw, I think this is what happened. I saw I would have like this rook f5 option. I have like c4 option. Once I have options, then I'm like, okay, I'll figure it out later. If he takes the pawn, I'll, do, I'll, I'll pick one. <laughs> I'll pick one. Um, that said, it still wasn't so easy actually as it turned out. So black played 
rook g6 here. Which I think was a good plan, because he wants to go rook h6, and then maybe rook g8. And then pin the bishop, and then make it very hard for me to, uh, to do anything with it. And... Um, Trying to remember, there was one very cute line at some point. Let's see if I can figure it out. I feel like at some point I was considering something like rook f3. And then uh, I was thinking like here. I'm trying to remember how did we get this position. Don't know. Maybe we'll get to it later. Okay, anyway. So, rook g6. I'm pretty sure I play queen e4. Yeah. Um, rook f7 I didn't like because queen d5 check. I didn't want to pin myself. So, in response to... I always want a queen e4 in response because I would be very happy to get any, any end game. Um... But I decided to start with this one. And, uh, yeah, on queen takes a2, I think I just wanted rook f7. Because here we're threatening the knight, um, and we're also, I think, threatening... Um, actually, we're not threatening rook h7 yet. But if we had c4 in, then this would be a threat. But here I think knight c5, queen f3, I guess. Okay, super sharp, but I mean, we have a lot of activity. I want queen h3 somewhere. Obviously, I have to keep an eye on g2, but we have this target as well. And then if, if I get like e6 at some point and the bishop can, can participate it, could be super strong so this was definitely kind of like an intuitive sacrifice i might have also been thinking about some other moves here i'm trying to remember yeah i definitely felt like i i was out of the worst of it for sure for sure at this point um in any case black point rook g8 which i thought was more more natural anyway and uh I already know the move. I don't know why I'm, <laughs> why I'm checking. I spent a lot of time here. I ended up going rook h4 because this threat was actually very annoying to me. Just rook h6 and then it's like hard to move the bishop. So yeah, I did not like this at all. So I got rook h4, just kind of preventing this. And now I really felt like black should have taken on a2. Because um, I was thinking about a couple things here. First, I was thinking about e6. Um, but I don't think this works. Queen takes e6, queen d4 check, and rook g7, maybe other rook as well, but um, yeah, this was hard to make work. Because here there's rook e4. But even on rook e4, I feel like there was there was some move. And black wants to play um c5 soon to kind of break break out of the pin. So this, this felt like, you know, now, I mean, here I'm giving up two pawns. So if I don't actually, if the attack doesn't pay off and black gets to play c5 and unpin, then I'm just going to be down two pawns and could be losing, right? So I was very unclear about that one. Um, I was likely going to play c4 here. And uh, looking to uh, play e6 now. But there is knight c5. I gotta go queen f3. And uh, yeah, this position just felt very unclear to me. Again, I wanted queen h3 here, but you know, black has the blockade. He has knight e6. You can put the rook on g7. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> just felt like a, a wild position, but I felt like I. If I didn't go queen e4, yeah, I really didn't know what else, um, what else to do. So I kind of just felt like I had to put my pieces on these squares. And then, yeah, he thought for a while here he played a6, which definitely was a, was a big relief. Because um, I actually have another threat with this move that maybe wasn't um, 
wasn't obvious, but but now I actually really want to go queen c4, um, which I end up doing. And the thing about rook h4 is that it covers queen h3. So earlier if I played queen c4, there would have been queen h3, kind of very annoying response. Here actually black has to give up the blockade and uh, and allow an endgame, uh, which I was, I was very happy with. Because in the endgame, the pawns are going to be very strong, uh, supported by the bishop. And um, black does get can get a blockade, but as a chess coach once explained to me many years ago, blockade isn't everything. Blockade isn't everything. So once I got this in here, I was super, super uh, comfortable. He went rook f8, uh, which I think is actually not the right approach because I think black actually needs to be kind of keeping more pieces on the board. Because what we end up getting, um, I trade, I take here. If knight takes e6, then I already have d7, which I think is actually pretty, um, pretty unpleasant. And then I'm uh, throwing rook d4, for example. So black has to start going, uh, going very passive. Um, I think I can also start like this as well. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, here I would have to recapture. I was calculating this during the game. I wasn't totally sure. It looked good. I mean, the pawns are, are very strong. Um, but yeah, he goes rook takes e6. But yeah, now I, I'm just able to get a grip um, with these pawns and uh, just slowly walk my king in and, and kind of break through. Um, so it was, pretty, it was pretty straightforward from here. I went king g2. Um, king g... No, knight d7 first, rook h5. I actually didn't have to make this move. I can also play like king f3 with uh, this idea. And then rook d4 next, and um, yeah, black black loses. Um, but this is fine too. King g7, king f3, king g6, king g4. And then this is kind of the key construction now. The king and rook and bishop, they kind of control everything, and black is stuck. Um, and white can just slowly inch forward. So a couple tactics if rook takes pawn. Going for, then there's rook g5 check. Um, but also the funny thing is I can also just fall for the tactic, and then after black takes the rook back, there's d7, and white wins. So, um, yeah, black is essentially just kind of stuck. Bishop f4 is coming, rook h6. So he played this one, which I felt is logical. I went here, and uh, he went b5, and uh, yeah. Now I was considering this idea earlier, but here is actually pretty, pretty direct finish. So rook g5, rook f5, um, and then just rook f8. And uh, king f5. So white uh, white just wins with the, the pass pawns. They're just way too strong. Um, if king f7, there's there is d7. I think bishop g5 might be even even more technical. Um, and then d7 next, because if d7 right away, black can actually go here, which is kind of funny, and then here. And then take this pawn. And if black is able to trade off the C pawn, then it would actually be a draw. I would have the wrong color bishop. So I was thinking, I was thinking about this during the game. But then I thought I can just promote and go here. And yeah, I didn't actually see a way for black to uh, to trade the pawns off. But still, you know, it was like, yeah. <laughs> I even this position, it's like there's still something to calculate. There's still something here. I think it wins for white, but uh, yeah, let's just see real quick. King b5. Yeah, yeah. So white's white's just like barely in time. But for example, this is like you know, this is a line where you have to be a hundred percent sure that you're. You know, here it's literally one tempo, right? That we're <laughs> we're just in time. Maybe there are other ways, but. Um, yeah, so I was thinking bishop g5 might be, might be simpler here. Uh, so king f5, black went rook g6. 
but then um, e6, bishop e5 might have been winning there as well, yeah. And now the two pawns are are just way too strong. Um, and I just want d7 and bishop c7, for example, or d7, king e7, bishop d6, check as well, or bishop g5. Um, and, uh, yeah, just no, no defense here for black. He tried this, but here, here. And, um, you know, there is still there are still ways to go wrong. For example, bishop g5 check. Black can take and go c4. And this actually, uh, I think white wasn't winning here. Um, b4, king g7, takes. I promote, takes, king here. And then uh, and black is in time. And black, black is fine. Black two pawns up. Um, so there's still ways to go wrong, but this... This, I think, was the, the easiest. And then just take, and now this one is coming, and it's basically over. Rook g8 was the last kind of try to try and give the rook, but um, just king f6 here, threatening mate. This would just be game over. Check, I can come this way. I can play king f7. So now it, it, it's just very straightforward. Um, so, yeah, that was it. I think he played... He played some move, I forgot. I think he played a5? a5, and then it was just over. It's just mate, mate next move. And that was the game. So that was my round one game from the US Open last night. Yeah, very tough game. Very tough game. I mean, I, was like, I mean, this this game was sweat work. This game was was literally sweat work. You know, we had to dig deep there and and make sure that we didn't lose. Because uh, we're, we're motivated now, guys. We are working on our chess.